Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cats Plays, and welcome to a Planet Zoo uh, video, I guess. I have been so excited to get this game, you guys. It came out on Tuesday, which was Wednesday Australian time, and I've been, I've done the tutorial, I've been playing in, what's it called, challenge mode a little bit, which basically means I've started to build my own zoo. These are little baby peacocks that I, or pea fowls, I think they're called. I, we call them peacocks in Australia. I think it's the same species. Anyway, I made baby pea fowls, you guys, and that's not all. We've got baby hippos and all kinds of stuff. So my plan was I mainly wanted to learn how the interface worked before I recorded anything because me sitting here clicking buttons and being like, I don't get it. Uh, probably not super interesting to watch. So just as a brief little overview, this is the new Crest Zoo. You can take the girl out of the Sims, but you can't take the Sims out of the girl. So we've got our main entrance here. I've got some vendors and stuff. We've got some little enclosures around the place with like snakes and stuff in them. We've got these grey buildings are work buildings. You have to keep them kind of away from the main thoroughfares because they have a negative impact on guests' enjoyment because guests apparently need to harden up. So my pe the ostriches, which I've actually just moved over into this bigger enclosure, were originally here, uh, which was fine when there was like two of them. But then when we got more, they got a bit upset. We have some pronghorn antelopes in this little enclosure. By the way, the terrain tool in this game, uh, the Sims could never, honestly. Like, I basically built this by pushing terrain around and then put some rocks on it to, like, make the roof look cool. But it's so good. I just wish the Sims terrain tool was that awesome. We have... A couple of little, what are these guys called again? I forget. A copy, I think you say it. So there's two of them. Every time they have a calf and it ages up, I need to get rid of it because they don't like having relatives in the enclosure. Oh, someone's about to have a baby. <gasps> Look, and the game has, it has poop in it. Yes, that's poop. We have a little baby hippo, Chenzira. I'm letting the game auto generate names because honestly, um, I could create names till the cows came home and I would never even what I thought I would do in this part is I want to put some animals in the empty former ostrich enclosure so I thought I'd show you how that works research complete I've researched a bunch of stuff I've got my vets when they're not tending to animals they're just basically working on like researching diseases and stuff so I guess we're gonna go Maybe that kind of a price range. It's pretty cheap for a zoo, honestly. Every zoo I've ever been to has cost way more than that. So the way this works, you click on the habitat. Once you've researched it, you can basically sort by species. And then it'll give you suggestions for things you might want to put down. So we've got a barrel feeder and a hanging grazer. So I could do things like put down a plant screen, for example. Uh, I'm still learning to navigate because... <laughs> I keep alternating between The Sims and uh, Planet Zoo, and honestly, the fact that they're so different from one another. Okay, is it baby time? Is it baby time? Nope, it's pooping. Oh, that is your bed. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Hippos, honestly. Who'd have them? <laughs> Not a great house pet. I like how they waggle their tails to keep their bottoms clean. I mean, fair. <laughs> Gyro enrichment. What the heck is that? Ooh, that's gonna roll in the water, I think. And we need some food enrichment. Hanging grazer, large barrel feeder. All right. So we can put one of these up, I guess. Simba is about to mature. One of our ostriches. Oh, the Akapis are freaking out. What's the matter, guys? Oh, they these guys are super anxious. Um, they're actually quite frustrating. One of the things my mechanic's currently researching is barriers, and I actually really want to get, um, like, one-sided glass, because these guys get really anxious being, uh, like, watched. And they end up hiding in here, and then they freak out. 
and they go in the enclosure and then they feel better again which you know but if this was double-sided glass like one-sided glass they wouldn't know that they were being watched anyway what i was actually here to do is put our aardvarks in so if i go to animal trading and then we go to the animal storage because i already bought them so we've got a male and a female i'm very excited we're going to move those first into quarantine because we want to make sure that they're healthy and not bring in any disgusting diseases so that's the plan multiple animals <gasps> what do you mean what do you mean hang on pause we've got some low welfare situation here it's probably because one of them's had a baby and they're oh my god look at how many babies they had i think that they can only have two in the enclosure that's usually how it works uh, is with the snakes in the little displays. I've noticed that it's usually group size one to five, so I can have five. This is a bit ridiculous though. And I'm trying to remember who the original two were. Maybe I could sell them. <laughs> hey, you want to buy a snake? No? No. All right, fine. We're putting some of the spares into the trade center. This is going to be a bit... What we're gonna do? It seems like too many puff adders in one habitat. Thank you, Captain Obvious. There we go. Back to what I was doing before I had to deal with a snack crisis. I guess I'm just waiting for them to tell me my quarantined animals are good to come out. So what happens is you go to the trading sort of market for looking for new animals, and then you choose the ones you want based on a few different criteria. Oh, serious injury. Vet has been called. One of the aardvarks has not passed quarantine. See, this is why you do it, right? So this one I can... Anueta is sick. This one is not. So we can move this one in here. So we've scheduled the delivery. Now, yeah, you go into the market, like I was saying, and then... I'm just going to pause this. You go into the market, you choose the animals you want to get and buy them with either money or conservation credits, which is what you get for like releasing, you know, animals into the wild or for uh, like breeding endangered animals, that kind of thing, like the hippos. So you get your conservation credits, you can use those to buy endangered animals. So the aardvarks are high interest to people, but also I only had to pay money. Oh my gosh, the boa and constrictor's pregnant now. These snakes. All right, the vet's been called. We won't worry about that aardvark for now because one is all we need to start getting this enclosure set up. So here is our aardvark. So I'm going to just pause this. So this is the welfare panel. Like It's a bit like the needs in Sims 4. You have... I'll just close that up. So you've got... Overall welfare based on nutrition, social habitat. Nutrition, it got fed in the quarantine centre, so obviously there's no food in here. We can look at terrain. It doesn't mind the like ratio of grass and soil and everything, and it doesn't mind the amount of space I've given it, but it does need a hard shelter. So that's something we need to look at. And there's no, no enrichment here yet, which is sort of mental well-being stuff for the animals. And we can have up to two altogether. So genetic makeup. This guy's got really low immunity. I don't exactly know how that works, but I presume that if we'd put it in the enclosure with the sick one, this one probably would have been like more likely to die. I haven't actually had an animal die yet, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so I don't need to do anything with the terrain. That's awesome. Uh, I will put some plants in just because it looks a bit sad without them. But it's actually happy with the level of plants we have now, which is almost none. So Africa, grassland and tropical are the plants that it likes. So we click nature and we come up here and we go continent, choose Africa, biome was grassland and tropical. And then that filters all of the plants to let me have a look. I'll keep this open because I don't want to put too much coverage. Like I don't want to, these trees are massive. Oh, I just need to have that not aligned to the surface so it at least stays flat. I love these really big trees, but I just, they're so big. Like, the problem is you, 
kind of want to strike the balance between giving your creature uh, the privacy it desires and giving people the opportunity to see it because the problem I have with these guys is they don't want to be seen ever and it's the same with the antelopes over here they're really quite private animals which obviously is a bit mean because um, part of me is like I'm so mean I'm forcing them to like perform for the humans but the idea is you make the money to support the breeding programs to enable you to help protect the animals. So, I mean, this is the sort of logic of a good zoo. It's not a money-making enterprise. So I need to give it a hard shelter. I'm going to try constructing hard shelter like I did with the antelopes and the acarpi. So we've got our sculpting tools. We have pull, push, flatten to foundation, flatten to surface chisel smooth and roughen the main ones i use are pull push flatten foundation and smooth i found those work quite well so pull the arrow looks like rays like it's just raising the terrain but it's not quite that simple and i'll show you what i mean in a sec so we've got pull got a nice little lump there see how the circles move around so i could be like i want to build a protrusion here and it will move towards the circle where it gets really interesting is with push so i can reduce the size of my brush and eh, probably not that much um choose my intensity i can put it here and it actually will go in it actually will go in and make like a hole in the side of the terrain and then what you can do is you can even use it to do like move the ceiling up from the inside that kind of thing so you can effectively make like little caves so i can be like i want my hard shelter for my aardvarks to look natural because that's the kind of vibe i'm going for despite the fact that my hippos have hard enclosures like artificial hard enclosures that's a bit different um because I was struggling with the terrain in that space for other reasons. But yeah, so I can be like, I want to go in here and I want to raise the roof up a bit. Oh, the camera is a bit of an issue, but yeah, I can do that and I can like choose where I want to push on the wall. And if I could do this in The Sims, then I would actually be competent at raising, like modifying terrain, which I, let's be real, am not. So I've really enjoyed, ooh, too far. I've really enjoyed playing with this tool. Now, obviously I've made myself a little cave, but I want the surface of it to be flat and a little bit higher so that when they're in, ooh, too big, when they're in the cave, the guests have a chance to see them because, you know, that's part of what we're here to do. And then likewise, I can do this and that will bring the kind of roof across and then I can push and go in here and because I've done that bit it's made it super thick but if I come in here and do this I can actually thin it out a bit and raise the roof up it's so cool you guys I love it which obviously this is not intended to be a tutorial on the planet suit terrain, terrain manipulation. It was mainly, I just wanted to fangirl about the game, but <laughs> ah. Ah. obviously I got too thin there. Anyway, so that hopefully will be enough of a hard shelter for our little aardvark. So if I click on him and then unpause it briefly and then I can have a look because it'll refresh. So it'll be like, oop, too much coverage. That tree apparently was too much i'll have to go for something a little bit more low key but he's happy with his hard shelter he's happy with his terrain uh so i just need to find some plants that aren't quite so massive maybe we could do like some ferns around the kind of cavey bit it's a technical term i'm just watching his coverage tolerance maybe this little tree We've got some, see, the other thing I really like is it shows you the root system underneath the ground and you can actually raise the plant up or you can lower it down. So I can be like, well, I don't want any of the roots to be visible or I want a bit and I could do that. And then the roots poke out. It's very cool. 
Um, I know the Sims team have said that they can't let us raise and lower um, plants just because they have multiple levels, like they have basements and stuff. Obviously, that's not a factor here. So what else might they like? Some vines? I don't know if I could do vines. I feel like that might be a bit tricky. Let's see. If I do that, does that look cool? Oh, apparently, even though I filtered on Africa, I didn't like the vines. When it appeared, see how it appears and it highlights as it highlights it red. Likewise, it's not loving the tree. Which tree is that? Oh, this one. Apparently, that is too close to the enclosure. Oh, I guess I'll move it for now. I'll just pop it out there. So the little aardvark's not freaking out over the tree. So yeah, he's happy with the environment. So it's really just the enrichment that we need for him now. So I'm gonna unpause that. Uh, we're gonna go habitat. I should be able to filter on the species aardvark, nice at the top. Obviously also have to put food stuff down for him. So we need some bedding. I think these guys are probably going to be small. I'm just worried this is going to mess the roof up because it can do that. So we've got two in there. We've got a feeder. We'll pop in maybe a couple of small food bowls. So like one here and one here. Uh, we'll put in some water over there. And I'll put one there as well because I'm feeling a little bit cashed up right now. And maybe a forage box? Doesn't seem to want to do that. I think I probably haven't left enough space for it. So let's have a look. Where'd you go, little dude? He's disappearing into his den. I mean, it is the middle of the night. That's fair. Social, okay, so he's severe social welfare issues. Is that again stress? This is one I find quite frustrating because there's no way to like click into that and find out that I can see. He'll definitely benefit from less fence line actually. So why don't we maybe do something about that? We'll help you out little dude. So I'm gonna do that. Just converting some of the fence line. So it's not quite as much of him being stared at. And then what I can do, this tool's quite cool once you figure out how it works. So you can select the whole fence, edit the barrier, and then I can select the bits I want to change the height of because these are lower than the rest. So I can select it like that and then just go, yep. And then that means he won't be able to see the humans through the taller bits of fence. So he hopefully won't feel quite so confronted. Uh, this is what I'm hoping. So let's see if that helps. Oh, his social welfare is still going down. All right, I'll see if I can help him on the enrichment front at least. Heaps of food enrichment. Do we have any toy enrichment for this guy yet? We do. Pop a ball down. Maybe a sprinkler and one of these little herb thingies. Hopefully that'll help. All right, that at least gets his enrichment sorted. I'm just going to have a look and see how my research is coming along because there's some animals that clearly seem to benefit. All right, barriers. No, see, it's the fifth item and I'm only on the third. Hmm. Oh, I kept saying he, it's actually the girl. The male must be sick, although has still passed. All right, so we'll move the other aardvark in. That may help. And I'll see what I can do about the welfare here. Maybe I can um, get some rock. What I'm thinking is if I can Lock off the entrance a little. Maybe he won't feel quite so exposed. Of course, it's all dark in here and I can't see. Anyway, it's fine. And we'll get a big flat rock. 
for the ceiling. Oh, like that way maybe. So the guests aren't going to be able to see anything now. Let's see if that has helped. Is that helping? I'm feeling a bit better? Yeah, he's feeling a bit better now. His social's going up, which is great. And this other little dude's probably going to do the same thing. So hopefully that means... Oh, I need to rein in this. My aardvark enclosure. Oh, he's hiding. Sorry, little guys. I promise as soon as I get my double-sided glass, I'll get you some. Cool. All right. What's going on in the rest of the zoo? Uh, finish some more research. They do actually just keep going. So if they finish research and it's not gold yet, they'll just kind of keep going. So we're going to research some rotavirus. Maybe a little bit of tetsu purpose something something yep yep researching that so that's all good all right how are you going now little dudes okay you're okay and you're okay too awesome we have two happy aardvarks that's very pleasing all right guys well i was gonna do some more enclosure stuff but i feel like this video has been uh between the snake emergency we had over here and the aardvark situation over here. I feel like it's been a bit of a long part, but that's okay. So yeah, this is Planet Zoo. It's very, very pretty. I have actually turned the game effects down a little bit because they, we had a rainstorm and the kind of, my computer's pretty decent. It's only six months old and it's a gaming machine, but it was not equipped to cope with a rainstorm in Planet Zoo. But look at this. Just look at that. That's like Sulani, only better. <laughs> oh, we've got an antelope that's about to mature. This little Wyatt. So cute. Hey, little guy. I feel like that's a good note to end on. How are you? Cuties. My little cuties. I'm not actually sure that these antelopes cope with having too many males, so I may actually have to move a little wide out, but that's okay. We'll release him into the wild. That's the whole point of this, you know, we breed animals, we release them into the wild, and we look after their needs. So, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to end this part here. So if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe, you know the drill. If you want to see more Planets and content, let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.